you, and you mentioned the affordable housing, and I look at Charlottesville as being so landlocked. Mm -hmm. I look at Charlottesville as having, what, 53% of its property, is it zone R1 yeah. for a single family? I mean, that right there needs to change. Well, the Planning Commission is looking at that. Mm -hmm. How, it, having an R1 zoning mm -hmm. is going to limit what we can do from a affordable housing standpoint. Is that the first step, do you think? It may be one of, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, a collection of steps that we need to take. But you also have to make sure that developers don't abuse any zoning um, changes that you put in place, mm -hmm. which is... Um, developers very, and abuse it go very, hand in hand. Very possible. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, yeah, so the R1 zoning may, I mean, definitely when you're talking about there's limited space to build things on, definitely um, something that you have to look at. But there also has, they have to be provisions in place to make sure that um, people are being served that you want, want served. Um, mm -hmm. Councillor Hill called it a affordable housing crisis. Mm -hmm. We at that point? Oh, we've been at that. We're past that point. Yeah. So yeah. what, I mean... One of the things that I appreciate about you, um, many things, but one of the things I appreciate about you is the transparency piece. Mm, um, you, that was your platform. Yeah. Being I honest, straightforward. <laughs> and I, I, one of the things I also appreciate about you is the Facebook lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're real. Mm -hmm. um, from the affordable housing piece here, we've been talking about it for so long. I feel like it's crescendoed a lot because mm -hmm. of the aftermath of A12. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's more on our mouths, more in the news cycle. I just, I, I'm, I'm trying to find a solution. Mm -hmm. I try to emphasize it on the show here. We have folks from, say, the Fifeville, Cherry Avenue, Prospect neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They're concerned. Mm -hmm. um, I asked, you know, April Ward, who grew up in Fifeville, and she's trying yeah. to be a Fifeville specialist, are you concerned that Charlottesville or that Fifeville could be swallowed by UVA? She says, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Where I'm going with this is what are the steps you see to solving this problem? Well, one, we have to make a commitment from at, at, at the city level, um, that affordable housing is a priority, mm -hmm. right? And so then those zoning modifications that we put in place, we need to make sure that they will include affordable housing and won't give developers wiggle room to get out of um, building. Like even now using the SUP, um, we know that that hasn't special worked use in permit. special use permits, yeah. that that hasn't worked in in the past. It's not currently working for the city. It hasn't worked in the past and it has displaced, um, you know, a lot of families. So, I mean, that's that's part of it. One of the things that concerns me with developers is they're, they're able, if they choose, to allocate money to a fund. A so very small percentage, small percentage. of funding, right, right, right. <laughs> funding to the affordable housing fund. Right, to yes. keep affordable housing on their project. Hmm. So basically, I, from my standpoint, mm -hmm. and I have a very layman's perspective, mm -hmm. you have the expert's perspective. Mm -hmm. From my perspective, a developer that's allocating money to a fund so he or she do not have to build affordable housing mm -hmm. in that development, that's pretty much reinforcing the class system yes. that, that's troublesome in this community. Yes, and it's been allowed, and it's been okay for a lot of people to, um, you know, participate in the displacement of um, Native families and families who don't have um, a lot of income. And that should be unacceptable. Right. And when you attempt to have that conversation, you're often asked, why is this about race? Why is this about class? And then, and then the right. next step is often you are trying to stifle entrepreneurialism or, yeah. or, or um, economic growth. Yeah. When the reality is that's not what's happening. No, because it has only benefited um, a certain group of people in the community. So if you're white and wealthy, right, that's primarily who benefits from what's going on um, in this community. And that is not hopefully the community that any of us should want to live in. Right. A diverse um, community is what we want. Which if we don't have these very difficult conversations 10 to 20 years from now, we won't have to have them because people will have been permanently displaced. I totally right? agree with that. Yeah. I totally agree with that. And I feel like the R1 zoning, in fact, it's a fact. The mm -hmm. R1 zoning was put into place decades ago to prevent white flight from mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of folks were going to the county for the bigger plots of land, mm -hmm. the bigger homes, the McMansions. And the city said, let's change this to, to R1. Mm -hmm. Let's keep this so people can want to stay in the city here. Help me out here. Educate mm -hmm. us. About the... Yeah, I mean, I see it like if, if we, we've made... Charlottesville's made its bed. Mm -hmm. We got to this point because of folks in leadership 
years, decades ago that have put us in this position. But you also have to look at the current zoning, not just the current zoning practice, but who owns the available land and what they decide to do with it. So changing the zoning, what they can do by right, like these are all conversations um, that, that we've had. Um, the West 2nd Street project was one of the times th this past year that we had those conversations where there wasn't a commitment to on-site affordable housing, not just a lack of commitment. It was as if people didn't even deserve to live in the downtown area. Is if that they Keith can, uh, Woodard's project? Keith Woodard's yeah. project. Yeah. If they couldn't afford the property, mm -hmm. right? And so then there's backlash about us not being a council that favors Developers, developers right. building entrepreneurship mm -hmm. versus a conversation about someone who has been building in this community for years wanting to continue to build the way they have been mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about diversity. Why can't you include affordable homes in your project that is on city owned property um, that the whole con entire conversation started because the city market needed a permanent home. Um, but you turn it, it from a market plaza, market um, centered um, to penthouse developer, kind of yes, yeah. to something that suits you and your, and your needs. And that should be unacceptable for us. Uh